Hello everyone and welcome to the video series Build It with Spring Boot. This video series tries to build Java applications using Spring Boot which has become de facto standard for building applications in Java world. It makes it easy to create standalone production grade Spring based applications. It cuts down on a lot of boilerplate code and its sensible defaults for configurations allows to build applications in super quick time. The project we are building here is a Spring Boot web application that demonstrates crude operations. The application allows to manage student information by a paginated student list, adding a new student, viewing student information, editing them and deleting them. The application also has login logout feature. The technology stack consists of Spring Boot, Undertow, Spring MVC, Java Persistence API, Hibernate, Timeleaf, Bootstrap CSS, Spring Security and JUnit 5. In our last video, part 3, we created the HTML pages using Timeleaf and we also added the student controller which is accepting requests and redirecting to the appropriate view. We will continue to work on these two things yet again in this video and complete their implementations. The controller will make calls to the service layer to get the data from the database and pass it on to the Timeleaf view. In our Timeleaf views, we will use this data and render the final HTML page which gets shown on the browser. Taking a look at the MVC architecture, we completed our model data in part 2 of the video and in our previous video, part 3, we created the controller to handle the request and it is redirecting to the appropriate view. We have our views created in Timeleaf ready to show this model data. So again, in this video, we will have controller make calls to get model data via service layer and pass it on to the view to render the final web page to be shown to the user. So let's get started. So back to our ID and uh, the application is running and in our previous video, uh, we created the list page uh, and then when you make the call to slash student slash list, uh, it goes to the student controller and then it redirects it to the uh, list list view which is created and then that gets rendered uh, on the web on the web, on the browser and we have created additional pages which was for add where we could add our students then we also had uh, for edit wherein we could add the student information and then we had view where we could just view the information and then we finally had a delete page where we could actually perform the deletion of a student and we will complete all of these uh, in this particular video. So let's go back to our list page and let's first populate this data set. So right now uh, uh, in our application runner, we had two students. So let's just use those and uh, show it on our list page. So first thing first, we need to go to the controller and uh, to be able to make calls to the database, we created the service layer in our part two of the video. So let's uh, add that service layer here. So I'll add the student controller and I will add inject the service via the constructor injector constructor injection. So uh, I'll say private student service and I'll say service and this would be final so that it we need to set it and we'll provide it from the constructor and we'll say this dot service equal to service so that it's set and we'll mark it as auto wired so that spring can automatically detect it and then inject the dependency which we need and so now that we have our service available and when we need to populate the student list then we need to make call to get the student dot get students and we need to provide the page number and page size so and since this is going to be controlled from the uh, request itself so we need to specify these parameters so that when the request is made those are sent from the browser side so we'll say int page number and we'll say final int page size so page number would be like which page we want to get and then and what should be the total number of records which needs to be fetched for, for each page. So that would be the page size. And this needs to be passed from as a request parameters. So we need to annotate those accordingly. We'll say request param. 
so that uh, we know that okay these are supposed to be passed and the same for the page size and we can actually just say or maybe we can just just say page and then we can just say size so that we know okay and uh, by default we can specify okay what what should be the uh, parameter name we can specify a different one if you want but then we can just uh, or maybe if you want we can just say like this value equal to page and we can say page number let's keep it at page size so that you will know the difference okay how to configure this and then do we default we can specify default so if nothing gets passed we will always fetch the first page so that will be the default value here uh, and actually it should be in the form of strings because it's going to be mapped by the spring automatically so then we we'll, for this one we'll say value equal to size and default value equal to let's say 10 so by default we'll just fetch only 10 records or actually we can just say let's say just two records so that and that we can page in it so we can create that way so we can say linda and then we will say rafael nadal and then we will insert that as well default student 3 and and once these parameters are available we can just pass it on to our query page size and we will automatically get the the corresponding response in the form of page and and this we need to pass it via the model attribute uh, model object over here and this will say model dot add attribute and we can just say students and it will be this would be page you can say page dot get uh, get content actually yeah so that so all the list of all the students will be set on this particular uh, model attribute and this is something which we can access it on our uh on the, our list page so we will open let's open the list page and to be able to access it uh, uh and uh, and since like we have a list of all these records we need to like iterate it and then sh uh, show it in for each of these rows which are, we are creating so that i mean we initially created like let's say two different records just for our uh, so that we can just view how they were looking but then like because we need to generate it generate this particular row for each and every student we need to use iteration here using time leaf code so let's actually head over to time leaf documentation time leaf .org. and let's go to docs and within these docs let's go to read online and like this is the entire documentation for and it will just uh, provide you like different examples how to use it for different scenarios um, how you want to use text how you want to use different message stores and what we are looking right now is uh, iteration yeah iteration so so they have example here so just like just like uh, ours like they have make a call to product service find all so they have all list of all the products they created they set this particular variable in the context and then they just they're just passing it on to the uh, the view page and then this context is basically something from where the template is going to uh, get the attributes and then process it and if you look at the time leaf uh, template uh, we have this th dot each which is basically the iteration form so for all records which are part of uh, in this particular list prods list and this is the same attribute which was configured as part of this variable so for our case we are setting it in the form of uh, uh, students uh, that is our attribute name 
and then this is something which we can access it over here so all elements just like we have like a for for, for loop iteration uh, in java it's very similar so for each uh, 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 students so for in our case basically for each students we will take each student and then like each property can be accessed via the uh, the variable here and then the individual property directly so let's head over to our list page here and instead of this what we can say is tr let's copy this and we have students and we will say for each student we are going to uh will will come to this in a second so what we can say here is that or we will actually say it something nice th colon text so that uh, this template still renders fine we don't have any issues so we'll say th colon text and then we'll say here is student dot first name and similarly we will configure this here as last name so when this student is available these these will get these will be rendered and then this value will be replaced and otherwise when we are opening this let's say on directly on a browser without without any rendering we will just see this and then all this th colon text will be ignored completely and for a different view edit and delete uh, let will come back to those and now we don't need this so let's first see if all of this is working fine so let's save it now first let's see if our server restarted yeah so we inserted all of those three records and let's come back over here and let's actually do one thing uh, right now we just have only just two records let's actually put it all of them so that we can just show it for all these pages so if we refresh it and you can see like okay all of these records are now generated automatically from the content which is coming from the uh, database now so yeah so, so far so good we don't need this model attribute anymore and yeah and let's actually head over and let's configure let like uh, this previous and next button so for this previous and next buttons what we need to do know is like whether there, there is there any previous page if yes then we will uh, keep this uh, button enabled otherwise if this is not uh, if there is no previous page available let's say this is the first page which we are viewing then we don't have any previous so in this case we will just disable this particular button and and same is the case with next if it if let's say we are on the last page we don't have any more records to be shown so in that particular case previous will be enabled and next button will be disabled so to do that uh, we already get a uh, different attribute from the page which tells okay what page are we in so so we can say final end current page current page number is equal to page dot uh, get number so that will give you the current page number and then to generate the previous page number what we can say is final int uh, previous page number and we can check is that page dot has previous so that will tell whether we have a previous page or not in this in this case if there is a previous page then it will be current page number minus one otherwise we can say let's say minus one is our uh, value which indicates that okay there are no more pages which are remaining uh, which are previous so we are basically at the first page and to indicate whether we are on the last page so we'll say page dot uh, has has next and this will indicate whether we have a next page or not so in that particular case our the next page would be current page number plus one otherwise if it's not there then we can just mark it as negative one so that will be the indicators okay whether if we have a last page or if we have a next page or not or we can actually just say this as next page number so that we know okay it's the next page number so and then what we can do is we can just add these attributes here we will say model dot add attribute we will say previous page number 
and this will be previous page number and then we can just say next page number and it will be next page number so we can save that if we come back here to our list page and what we can do is in our pagination what we can define is whether this needs to be disabled or enabled so what we can do is for each scenario wherein we need to disable or enable we can actually create two separate set of buttons actually so one will be disabled all the time one will be enabled all the time and then we can choose whether we need to show uh, disabled one or the enabled one and to be able to choose between that we need let's say a conditional operation and that will be available as part of conditional evaluation so what we can do something like is uh, we have this operation uh, th colon if and then we can provide a condition which says whether this is be, this is true or false and then if it's true then this gets rendered this element gets rendered if this is false then this element doesn't get rendered so so in this case what we can say is uh, let's actually split it here and to basically let's say disable something uh, if we go back to our bootstrap get bootstrap.com and let's actually go to the docs and let's come to let's say components and let's come to pagination and if let's say you want to disable something deactivate it something like this so in this case we just need to add a class as disabled okay so let's do one thing it is on the li element okay so what we will do is uh, let's say this one is the enabled one and then this one is uh, this is the disabled one so we can say disabled and this one is enabled and similarly the next button the first one is disabled and the next one is enabled so in that case it will be like this and uh, to be able to render this particular element what we will say is th colon if and what and our criteria would be uh, if our uh, previous page number is equal to minus one so we'll say this property is equal to is equal to minus one so if this is true then uh, we will render this element and and we don't have anything to do over here so href will will be uh, we don't want to go anywhere and since we marked it as disabled so it won't go anywhere and if at all our we have the previous page so in that particular case we need to generate the corresponding page so what we can say is either we can say th colon f href so that this href gets generated and in this case what we need to pass is uh, different parameters so you remember we configured these uh, request parameters so here we configured it as page number but then the parameter which it is expecting to be sent from the request is this uh, value which is configured as the value on request parameter uh, uh, annotation so what we'll say is page number this page number is equal to and then we will say dollar previous page number which is this property and since this is going to be there we need to put it in quotes so we will say Yeah, so this is the query parameter which we are specifying and then the page number whichever is coming from the uh, server side we just add it over here so that this gets generated and similarly we need to generate the same thing for our uh, case here so we will say this will be page equal to and this is our next page so we'll take this and then we will configure page equal to next page number and we also need to disable user disable configuration we don't need this and in this case we'll say if next page number is equal to is equal to one and let's just save it so now that it's saved let's come here and we are able to see both of these 
ah we also need to have the inverse condition so this is only this only needs to be shown when this is not equal to 1 and similarly for this condition we need it to be shown oops this is on the wrong element so this has to be here and this needs to be here but with the inverse condition so this should not be equal to one and yeah so now since this is only the the only page and we just have three records so we put the uh, buttons are disabled so we cannot go to either previous page or next page so and that's why let's go back to actually make this default as let's say just two elements or actually we can do one thing is we can say static final int page size or you can say default page size equal to two so that it stays at one particular place and then we can just say default page size plus so that's a string value and yeah i think that should be it yeah so now we have these two uh, um, so the first two records are shown over here and then we have a next page since the, we have one more and then if you see over here we have the page number uh, coming as page number equal to one because that's the page we want to go and then on the next page uh, we have the last uh, record and then since this is the last page we have the previous uh, button enabled now and then we can go back to previous page okay so that part works now and let's actually configure some of the other things so let's come here on the list page let's say if you want to navigate to our uh, add button page so in that particular case what we need to do is basically I mean if you have to go to add page you just say slash add and then you will be at the uh, add student page so what we can simply do is uh, on our add new button over here we can just say href equal to add so it will automatically uh, render it correctly so if we go back to over this page refresh it just once so that we see so you see that now the link is pointing to uh, student slash add so if you click over here now it goes back to correctly so essentially what's happening is that this ad basically makes call to the uh, slash student slash add and then it we are redirecting it to the uh, add view and similarly we can actually configure these but let's actually keep it here for now yeah and let's configure these here so that we can also uh, like link complete this particular page so for view uh, what we need to do is we need to pass it as uh, so for each uh, student ID we need to pass it as uh, the an ID so what we will do is we'll come here we'll configure this as th colon href and then we can simply just configure the view name so this is the view and we need to pass let's say ID equal to and then the ID of the student so that will be uh, plus and within this section we have this student attribute over here we can say student dot id so that's a student id which needs to be passed when we view this particular student so that we know which student we want to just see and we can actually get rid of this it's not entirely and similarly we need to configure for our editing so same thing we just instead of uh, passing on to the view uh, uh, view page we actually go to our edit page and similarly if we pass it on to our for editing uh, no for delete operation we need to pass it on to our delete page and then we pass the student id for which we which we want to delete and yeah that should be it so if we refresh it now so now you see that okay i mean the url now changes to uh, view colon uh, question mark id and then the id of the student similarly we have for edit and we have it for our delete and similarly for other student we have a different id and then uh, for last one we have a different id centered over here so and if let's say if we click on the here we actually go back to view page and then if we click here we actually go to the edit page 
and then if you click on delete then we go to our delete page so all of that linking is working fine now and then if we click on add we are already here so so yeah so that's pretty much for i guess uh, the list page let's actually head over to our um, let's say add student page so let's come here uh, let's go to our add.html and first thing what we can do is let's say if somebody clicks on this cancel button we can go back to our list page and to be able to do that what we can simply do is we can simply say just go to list page so somebody can just simply say cancel and then we are back to our list page so so that it's uh, it's linked and then we have our add student here so so we come here we say uh, we didn't do this particular part so let's actually uh, add our ids over here i mean you can actually add the ids directly so if let's say we go to our list page um, we can actually just say th colon text and then within the curly bracket we can say id and in which case you will actually see the IDs of the student and or what you can also do is we can actually basically generate let's say individual numbers which are like non uh, like not you can just say one two three four so that like it's not very related and this is mostly used uh, because these are IDs of the database so you what you can do is you can actually use it direct uh, like keep it hidden behind the scene and then you can just uh, like generate these numbers dynamically and then the way we can do that is and that would also be a good thing to actually say is uh, within this iteration right uh, you also get these uh, uh, iteration statistic uh, status variable and it allows you to have different properties so let's say if you want to generate uh, let's say uh, odd even kind of classes uh, which is i think is also in this example so Let's say you want to have classes uh, uh, striped uh, different classes for each of the rows so in that particular case like you can say odd will have a different class and then even will not have this particular class so that way i mean if you want to generate it that is also possible using this iteration statistic uh, uh, iteration stat uh, variable and then you you have to get different properties so you get this first uh, flag uh, last flag whether it's even or odd what's the current value what's the size what's the count which is starting from let's say one and then like for each iteration it counts upwards and then if you are looking for let's say index which is starting going to start from zero so that is also something which you can do so what we can actually do over here is that uh, we can generate our student ids based on let's say each increment uh, account uh, let's say one two three four so so what we can do here is that uh, we can use this uh, first of all we need to add this let's say iteration variable or i mean you can name it, it whatever but then this is the one which is going to have these different uh, properties uh, index count size etc so i'm naming it as iteration and then within this iteration what you can say is iteration dot let's say uh, count which is going to start from one okay and when you do that let's head over to so you'll see that this is one two and then let's if you go to the next page you will again have like this one two and we can also probably do one thing is like for each page we can actually add the offset so that like these gets entered like as one two three proper proper uh numbering over here so to be able to do that i think uh you need to take the current page uh, in our controller we have this current page which we are not setting but i think we can set it over here again so we can say current page number and this will also be available in our view page and what we can say is current page number multiplied by the page size i think that is also not here so we can actually add that as well and uh, page size which is i mean we already have it so we can just keep it here so we can say this page size variable you can save this as well you can come here 
and what we can say is current page number into page size and then we will add this so that for each page we will just keep uh, add these additional offset and the iteration count will just take it forward to just keep adding the newer uh, iteration count so let's when we save this and yeah now you'll see that okay this is one this is two and then let's say for the next page because the current page now is equal to one and then page size is two so two plus uh, so this this becomes the the total number of records which we have skipped as of now and then the titration count is basically just incrementing upwards from there so that's how we can actually do that i mean but it's up to you how you want to use this you can actually also just put out the uh, id value over here which uh, we saw earlier so let's go back to our uh, view page I think that would be easier to do so let's first uh, get this going so let's come here and let's if we click on this particular ID and we can just see that okay these are all certain details are over here and then if we cancel it we go back to the list page so again just like we added it for our uh, add page we can actually add also add the same thing over here for cancel we can just say list page and it will automatically be listed back to uh, the list page so that is that and then uh, when this request is now uh, going to our student controller on our view page we have the ID which is being passed from the uh, on the request so what we need to do is we need to just map it so we can just take this model and we just take this one of the request parameters so we just say this one and here in this particular case we need the ID to be available if not then we will not be able to serve the request so we will make this as mandatory and we will say UUID is what is needs to be passed and here it's the student ID which, which we want to take a look and once this is available so what we need to do is we'll say service dot get student and then we will pass this particular UUID and this is going to return uh, whether the student exists or not So now if this particular record exists then we can return that otherwise we can uh, return let's say an empty object uh, and that is something which we can compare uh, in our view so what we can say is uh, model dot add attribute and we can say student and we will say record dot is present so if it's present then we will say record dot get otherwise we will say new student and then we can also let's say add attribute and we can just say, let's say id is the id which is being sent on the request and then we will return back to our view page so let's save that once this is saved now we are going to make the call whenever the view page is rendered and when this gets rendered what we can do is so whenever so when you have to sh when the student is not available in that particular case we need to show this uh, and then if not then we just show the uh, details of that particular student so again like we need to use the if condition over here so we can say th colon if oops and then what we need to say is that is our student dot id is equal to is equal to null so if that's the case because let's say what we did was uh, if it's not present then we created an empty student and then in for this student we will have the id value as as null con value coming so if that's the case we will say student not found and then we can just say go back to the previous page so we can just uh, add this over here and then we can just also create a get a div it says th colon text and here we can actually be a little bit more descriptive so we can say student with id and here we can actually say uh, student so no 
so it's going to be id this so this is the one which is actually passed from the on the request parameter and we can say this not found and within this and then we can say say this div so so what basically we are doing over here is that and we can just say this one to so go back so what will happen here is that if somebody opens this page on a browser directly without uh, render without having the time leaf rendering engine available in that case we'll just show a student not found so that the ui ui is rendered correctly and then when we are rendering via the time leaf engine we will say student with id and this is the id which is passed on the request and then we will say that okay for this particular id we were not able to find this particular student record so let's save it and it says student with id not found but this should be able to find it actually we just needs to be out of it so this should be here and then maybe you can actually just add a div wrapper around it div and this actually text we can move it inside We don't need this so that yeah. So that way I think it should work now. So okay, so it's not found and then in that particular case we need to can just go back. But why are we not able to find this record? Ah, I know what happened here. So I mean like this is something which was so every time when the application gets started, we basically delete all those records and we insert new one so that's why this id is not available anymore so we'll have to go back here and we'll have to let's say open this one of these once again and then now you see that okay that's that thread is now available and now since this is so let's actually change let's say this let's say seven to let's say eight now and then you will see that we are able to see and then we have this go back button here rendered so let's actually change it back and now we can actually put the other div here and we can actually just say div and we don't need the form actually because we are just viewing the content here we don't want any request going back to the server over here so and if student id is not equal to null so in that particular case we just need to show the student information so in this particular case we will have all of this information and we will have the value we'll say th colon value equal to dollar student dot first name and similarly we can put it here for last name and say save and now you see that we have the first name and last name populated for here so if we actually make this as go back so this is go back we come here and then now if we view this then we get this this student's information if we let's say go back to our last student information we click here we see the first name and last name populated for this student as well uh, let's now go back to edit uh, now edit in this particular case would also be very similar so what we can do is we can actually copy this particular part at least to be similar to what we have here so that if that particular student is not available we can show this same thing and then we can just go back to the page and then let's actually head over to our controller wherein we will have a similar thing uh, just we had for view we also needed to do it for our edit so in this particular case we again uh, need these two fields and we have student dot get student if it's present then we just add that otherwise we disable it and we don't need the view over here we need the edit page over here 
and let's save it now and now if we come over here refresh this page just wants to confirm and then if you go back to our edit page and then you can see that okay this this student exists but let's say if i change this to some other we see that okay this student does not exist and we come back to our edit page once again and now since like we are going to perform the operation of editing we need the uh, the form attribute and in this particular case instead of actually having a wrapper div we can actually set it directly on our form attribute in which case we will say if student id is not equal to null then we just show this so so in this particular request we just say go back otherwise if we, this is correct id then we just show this particular information and again uh, we will have to do very similar activity wherein like we have to set the value of our student to our uh, input boxes so we will come here we will say value is equal to first name and value equal to last name and now we will be able to see and then we have this operation for update and cancel and now we need to configure the uh, the action variable also so that like we know where this particular uh, form needs to be posted so in that particular case what we can actually come here and say is that th colon action and the way to specify let's say the actions are uh, if we go back to our documentation and let's take a look at uh, how these expressions are configured yeah so uh, so how these expressions are evaluated so if let's say you want to render a attribute or a variable you want to pro provide it in a let's say a dollar and then this curly braces and let's say if you want to uh, do some specific uh, let's say uh, field expansion just for a specific object then you actually use this uh, asterisk and then the curly braces uh, if you have to get some value from let's say a message store that you use this pound and the uh, as, uh, curly braces and then if you have let's say a ul expression you want to use basically to make a call to let's say backend so in that case you need to use a at the curly braces so since we need to make a call when this form gets submitted we need to make a call to backend which is essentially going to be our uh we don't have the save method so let's actually add that first so let's we'll say post mapping and this will be let's say slash student slash save so for both adding and updating we will actually have uh, the same method and we'll say public uh, string and then we will say uh, save we need our model object so we'll say model and then we'll say model and then in this case uh, uh, the object which we are working on is our uh, student object so we'll say final student and student and since this is our uh, the, the actual object which we are working with so this needs to be annotated with model attribute and then finally let's say if you want to let's say have say some errors which are like happen as part of let's say some operation and you want to indicate back to a view so that needs to be configured uh, via the object called binding result and so you can just add errors uh, on this on this particular object if at all you have this so in this particular case now um, and now let's and once this save operation is done we can actually just uh, return it back to our student list page actually so we can just say return and we can say redirect to our list page so that will redirect to list page and to save the object what we can simply say is that service dot save and we just try to save this particular student and if that's the case and then we save it and then we go back to our student list page so that should be pretty straightforward now let's save this and uh, let's go back to our edit page over here so as i was mentioning that okay we need to specify the save operation so that will be using our at the rate annotation and we will say save since that's the endpoint which we are going to call to uh, have the save uh, 
operation done method is post and that's what we have configured as our post mapping and as i was actually also saying this so we actually we can use this selection variable expression and that will be actually pretty useful for us so what we can say is uh, our main object is i mean they would have an example here somewhere that will be easier to understand uh, yeah so uh so yeah, if you see, uh, we have this, uh, let's say a session dot user, and then what you can do is you can actually just specify it as an object, and then all these expressions which are going to be uh, inside this particular uh, context, only those uh, only those variables are available. Other than uh, like you will have to otherwise specify for each of the like session dot user dot first name session dot user dot last name. So instead of doing that, you can actually do something like this where you specify marker as an object and then you can use this asterisk syntax to just uh, specifically uh, uh, access the variables of this specific object so that's something which we can do here as well so our uh, th object is our uh, student basically so that's the student which we are saving on our uh, let's say our edit class so if it's present we just add that so that's our model attribute and that's the one we will actually have it so that's the object and then to configure the value what we can use is say instead of this dollar we can say, say asterisk and we can just simply say star first name and similarly we can actually just say last name and then these values will automatically be configured and and then we also need to add the id so we'll Put it as an in a hidden so field so we'll say type equal to hidden and uh, id equal to id and name equal to also id and our th colon value is equal to our star strict and then id and actually we should also put this for our first name and our last name yeah so let's save it actually i'll restart the application just in case to clean anything and let's start the application once again let's head back to our application here so let's actually go to one of the edit pages here and this is out of context what happened here so ah okay we didn't close this attack so now it should be fine yeah so now we have uh, our edit student over here and we have our id and everything looks fine on submit we will actually make a call to save method and then this cancel will actually go back so we'll actually just say go back to the list page so if we click here we go back to the previous page and then we come here we click on edit and let's say we say john doe one and then we save it and then our record is updated and then we are back to our uh, list page can change it back again and we can say update and if our id is incorrect so for this six i'll replace it with five so it says student does not exist and then we can just say go back so we we'll come back here and so our view implementation is done and our edit implementation is done let's actually create the add new which is also going to be similar to this one so let's uh take so this one we can take as it is uh no we don't need it because we, we are not going to pass any id over here so for add it is going to be the same it's just that we are going to add this particular section which is going to be here which is very similar 
or we can actually just uh, just copy all of this or maybe just this part where we are just have a hidden field and then we just provide it here so in this case uh, we don't have a id field since so we can just keep it out of here and let's get rid of these two and when we sub get make a call to submit it will make a uh, uh, it will call the action so that action is again same so we can just copy it from here add it on our action class so it is going to make a call to save with post method and we don't need this we don't have this if condition we have it all it all the time and when we are somebody is making call to let's say add what we can also do is that we can actually add the model attribute with a default new student object so what we can do is so what we will say is when the new this is called so we will say final model model and here we will just pass a new student object so that this is the one which is saved and that should be it and we we'll come back to add here in this case this is the student object first name last name is going to be mapped here and then add is going to submit it and then this should cancel it so let's save it let's save this it will restart our application we'll come back here refresh it once again here then let's go to our add view let's add another one so let's say Virat Kohli and then let's say add so now it has added and we can see that now we have our new record which is available so uh, yeah and then if we add if we don't want to add anything we can just say cancel we'll come back here again and then our record is just here and then now finally uh, we come to our delete operation and let's say we want to delete Rafael Nadal so again taking inspiration from the same uh, edit screen come to delete uh, we can just replace this all together it will say if the student is not found it will just say as it is and then we can do is um, come to here and then when somebody makes a call to let's say delete then it will show that student does not exist so let's come here so it says bad request uh, validation fail uuid object ah okay so if we come back here okay so even though we marked it as id but we didn't mark it as a request parameter so we need to mark it as a request parameter and then it should be mapped correctly yeah and now we see that this particular student does not exist so it just shows it this and we also had a no if you save it now and then we should have it so now we have this back button which is go, going back to take to our which will take us back to our uh, list page and it should also be working so now if we, let's say we delete this now we don't see that operation because this particular record exists and now, now we need to populate these two so what we can say is is that uh, we will configure now just like we have it on the edit page we will have a form action and we'll come to delete we'll just copy paste here so in this particular case instead of actually making a call to save we will actually make a call to delete operation method let's say we'll keep it at, as post the object will be our student object and then if the student id is not equal to null then in that particular case we show this otherwise if it's null then we show uh, the alert box and then we go and the link to go back to the list page and here in this particular case we can use this again or maybe we can use the view page since there, that had disabled values over here and we can just say this and since we are using a th object we don't need this we can actually have to use the asterisk notation so that way and then when we 
click on the submit button it will go back go to the delete operation uh, with the post and we need to provide an id over here so if we cancel it we need to go back to a list page and to be able to actually so if we come here and let's come to the delete operation we don't have a add we have a view we have an edit we have a get mapping for delete but we don't have an operation which is actually going to delete this particular thing so we can just say post mapping again and then we have a delete we have the model and we will have our request param final uuid and id so that's a student id which we need to delete and what we can say is service dot delete and delete this id and then once that is deleted we just go back to our list page and this is the id which we need to pass from our ui so in that particular case we will actually need similar thing which we have for our uh, edit page so we need to pass this id via the hidden attribute so uh, we will configure it here and we also saw this for so we can actually instead of this we can actually use our th object notation so that it's easier for us yeah and it will be consistent since that's what we are using everywhere so this will be this this will be this and i think that should be we can save all of these together and now since we are restarting the application it's it's no longer available so if we go to view page we are able to see this come back let's try to delete this and then we have this operation over here and if let's say we delete it then our john doe is go gone now and then we and the first student now becomes linda and second one is rafael and then we don't have any other since those were the only three which we insert which we insert when the application starts so yeah i think that's all the pages i guess yeah so we have our add page where we can add student information let's add for coli uh, and our page nation is working so, and then we can view this we can edit this and let's change it to let's say Sachin Tendulkar update it again here then let's say we can delete it and in this particular case we delete it and it's now it's gone and so we don't have any more records available ah we also need to add the tests for our controller so that we are able to test these things correctly so for tests, uh, we don't need the application. So I think we can just stop this app our application here and uh, let's actually create a unit test class for this one. So we'll come to our package explorer, Oops, not this one, but here. And for our controller, we'll say right click, new J unit test case. And we'll say finish. And for our test controller, uh, since this is going to be running uh, as part of Spring, so again we need to provide the Spring extension dot class. And uh, and for our let's close all of these. split these two so that we can see the code on the left side and then also can just compare it and run it accordingly on the right side so now uh, since we have uh, the service here we need to add this dependency and then we need to mock this implementation so as you remember from our part two of the video we had the annotation called mock bean which comes from spring and it allows to uh, add the dependency uh, in the form of a mock and then we can just add the uh, uh, stubs on this particular uh, mocked implementation so we'll say our private uh, student service 
and this is our service class so that will be the mocked implementation here and then we will define our controller class as our fixture so we'll say private student not this but student controller as our fixture and uh, for testing out uh, the MVC MVC flow uh, spring provides us with the uh, mock MVC uh, that we can use so let's go to the spring MVC say mock MVC and what we need it is from let's go to spring.io go to projects we'll go to overview go to spring framework and we need to go to spring mbc and then within spring framework we have this testing section which can provides us different so if we want to let's let's say a spring mvc test it provides a mock mvc uh, class which we can use to perform the uh, um, different calls on the controller and then based on that we can also see like okay if the response is coming back correctly or not and then we can actually take a look at the example here yeah so this is uh, using this mock mvc and you have different classes so this mock mvc builder is the one which you can use for building the mock mvc object and then you have request builders which uh, allows you to uh, match against the request object and then you have these result matches which, are, which allow you to um, compare and match the results which are coming as part of the re response and then there are different result handlers so if let's say they want to handle a different uh, response itself uh, you can handle it via a generic mock mvc results and yeah so let's say this is how you want to configure it so we can just take this as is and we can configure it as forever so and we need to specify this so we'll say private mock mvc mvc And let's import this so that's there before each is coming from our J unit Jupyter say public void setup and we'll say mock MVC is equal to let's say MVC and it's already imported and this one will say this fixture oops. for this uh, for this student controller we need to provide build a mock MVC and then we using that we will make the calls to this particular controller and then make sure that the response requests and responses are correctly configured and let's configure so instead of actually taking the bigger one let's actually take a simpler one so as an example so let's say this for this view particular view class so when we make a call to let's say slash student slash view we should be able to let's say uh, uh, get a record so in that particular case we will have a model attribute as student and then that would have a proper student object and we will have this id and then the view name should be this so let's actually conf let's test that particular right test for this particular uh, view scenario so we will say view uh, returns uh, returns view page with student from database when student id exists in database so first thing first so we need the uuid and we can say uuid dot random uuid let's static import this one And then what we can say is that uh, 
uh, what's the student which is ex existing in our database so we can say student student is equal to new student I think we have a constructor which has all these no we don't have one so we don't we should be having we have all our constructor okay so what we can say is that uh, random UUID then we can say random UUID dot two string so that would be the first name of the student and then we can say uh, another one which is going to be the last name of the student so that's a student which is existing in our database and what we can say is that uh, given which is coming from our bdd mockito dot given uh, when somebody calls service class dot get student with this particular id then we say will return and then we say optional of of and then student this is the return. so when when the call happens for service dot get student with this particular id then we will return this student which is going to have this particular value so that's our expectation let's start to import this one and then then this is the case afterwards then we say then so coming from bdd mockito dot then in this particular case we will say service should have been called once should dot get student by id and then then service should not have should have no more interaction so after this was the mock expectation should not have any more interactions and within this uh, to perform the action we will say mvc dot perform within perform will have mock mvc request builders so this is the class which has quite a lot of methods so if we let's say come down here uh, setup features yeah so you will see that you can say get and then you have all these expectations actually so we can let's do one thing let's just start to import all of these for now so we will say mock mvc request builders dot get so this is request builders dot star you can just come here static and another one would be result dot mark mvc result matches dot star so that way we can match all of these so so now we don't need to specify so that makes it shorter so we say perform get and then within this get we will say slash students slash view and then we also need to specify the parameter uh, for id because if we don't then we won't be able to get this and reach to this particular endpoint so the parameter is dot param id is this id which we are uh, and it should be adding string to string yeah so when this happens then what we can expect is that dot and expect and then this is and these are the expectations which we are performing so and then this actually says so we can just mark it as those exception And actually, what I will do is actually I will say formatter 
off for now so that it's easier and then we can say formatter on so what we are performing is we are basically say on the mvc we are making a get request to slash student slash view and the parameter passed is this id and when this happens then we need to add expectation so and what are the expectation is that our uh, status should be okay that uh, we are able to get a proper page returned and and expect and then another expectation would be that when we have this uh, we have our model attribute so we will say let's actually see the documentation um let's spring.io and let's go to projects overview uh spring framework and yeah actually let's go to learn and then we need to check the api documentation yeah that's the one which i was looking for and within this uh we need to find class for result matches yeah that's the one so in this class you will see that there are quite a lot of matches for different things so let's say you want to match the let's say content body you want to check for cookies you want to check for headers you want to check for let's say json path within the uh, body uh, for model you can access the model uh, uh, values in using this like we want to actually match the request itself status is what we already just saw and then if you want to let's say assert on the view itself xpath values so all of these are available to you so uh, we just saw the status one and let's see that okay since we are have adding some values in the model attribute so we can actually assert that so we will say model model method and then what we can say is that model dot uh, attribute and we say id attribute and in this case is which is uh, using we are using the hamcrest core over here and this value should be equal to the id value which is uh, specified uh, in the request itself and another thing is we can actually assert on our uh, student object itself so we can say student and then this student should have uh, let's say the properties which are defined so let's say the student object should not be null so i mean one thing which we can actually check is that uh, is not null value so it's not a not null it's not null not null and then also this should be like uh, it should be a property so what we say here is that uh, matchers dot has property yeah this one let's try to import this one and we say uh, this student should have first name property should be equal to student dot get first name and that should close it and then similarly we will assert it for of the last name property it should match the last name and also the id attribute of which we can actually put it on top here and this is equal to our id so yeah and then afterwards i mean uh, it should match the view name which is being passed over here so that is something which we can uh, assert based on this uh, view method which is available over here so we can say dot and expect we'll say view and what we will compare is that view name is equal to uh, students dot view and yeah i think that should be it so let's run this test getting a null pointer exception uh, how do we prepare this standalone one dot io and let's actually look at the example which 
which was part of the text example so come to testing uh, spring MVC test and here they are building it as ah we need to pass the object directly so fixture so this fixture is equal to new student controller and we just provide the service class so that will be the mocked implementation so and then we pass it here so yeah that should fix it yeah so now the test is running we just have to verify if everything is working fine so now it is actually checking for a different thing ah since this id is not going to be the same so we have to specify this id as here which is incorrect so this id should match the id which we are passing on the database since that is what we are also checking over here so if we run it now that should fix it yeah so now our test is running and we are now able to uh, get this test so similarly uh, we can add it for our all of the other scenarios as well so for add students uh, uh, so let's say if you want to add let's say this add student one so we can pretty much take the same method uh, we will say add returns the view with st empty student So in this particular case, we don't have any ID as such over here and we don't have any student. So none of this is going to happen over here. And what we can then say is that it should have no interactions, should have no interactions that way. And we will just say get student dot add and there are no parameters which we are sending over here in our request. And what we can verify is that status should be okay there is no attribute as id over here but we have a student object which is in our model it should not be null and the id property should be is you can say null value similar is the case would be for our first name same is the case should be last name so all these properties should be null and then the view name which is returned from the response would be add and let's fix this one and yeah that should be it so basically we are kind of imitating the request response uh, and then that 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 gives you more confidence of how your application is performing so let's say tomorrow somebody changes something you can you will have your test to actually back it up uh, so that the implementation is working correctly yeah and now we have both of our uh, tests running and then now you can see that i also ran it for uh, with the coverage uh, which is uh, the plugin which is available in eclipse but you will have a similar have a similar uh, plugin in the um, let's say a different id let's say netbeans or intellij and then you can actually get this coverage report there as well and yeah so now you see that we add, add the test for our add method we added the test method for our view method we can sim similarly add it for uh, the other scenario for view also so in this particular case let's say uh, with st empty student uh, view returns view page with empty student when student id does not exist does not exist so in this particular case we don't have any student and when somebody gets calls uh, with this particular student id we will return optional of empty and we don't need this student class and in this particular case uh, this property would be a null value just like we were checking it here because we are setting it to be an a this to be an empty student object so we can just use the one which are we added for our um, 
add method so we'll say student should not be null but the id property should be null value as well as the first name should be null as well as the last name should be a null value and then the view which should be returned is return dot view and there should be no so after this interaction there should be no more interactions and yeah that should be it and this is the parameter which are passing and then we run this yeah so now we have all our test scenarios covered and also this this method which was earlier showing that okay it was not fully covered now it's completely covered all the two two of two branches are covered so similarly we can add the test for our list page uh, similarly for our edit page uh, delete page all the methods here and then that would give you more confidence uh, when you are making changes to this particular class and you will have tests to kind of validate all the use cases correctly so yeah that is all for this particular video we con completed all the ui pages we added all the implementations the only implementation which is remaining is our login logout functionality and that's something which we will take a look at in our uh, last part of the video which is part 5 so see you all in the next video thank you so much for watching the video if you like this video please give it a big fat thumbs up if you are new to this channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to receive notifications for all upcoming videos see you all in the next video